All right, we got a uh, 2008, I believe, Toyota Solera, and we're going to put front axles in it. I'm not sure what's going on with it. He just told me he wants front axles put in, so that's what I'm going to do. I haven't even really drove the car except to put it in the shop here. So we're going to uh, just go over this. I'm going to do both sides. Uh, they're both pretty similar. Of course, the passenger side, you're going to have the intermediate shaft to deal with. It's not that big of a deal, but uh, I'll go over uh, both sides. We're going to start the video with the driver's side. So if you need the passenger side, uh, you may want to fast forward until we get to that. But uh, for now, we're going to do the driver's side. So we're going to pull the wheels off and get the tools ready. And then we'll start taking this thing apart and getting the axles out of it. All right, so we got the car up on uh, jack stand and the jack. Uh, you know, always use a jack stand when you work on a car. So anyway, we're just going to pull this caliper off first. It's a 14 millimeter nut or bolt. We're just going to go ahead and take the uh, caliper nuts loose and then hang this out of the way. And you don't really want to hang these down uh, just on the hose itself. Get something to, uh, I use these caliper hangers. But if you don't have that, a, a bungee cord, whatever you have laying around, just to kind of hang it out of the way so it's not just hanging on the hose. Next thing we're going to do is pull this uh, 12 millimeter bolt out right here that holds the uh, brake hose and the uh, speed sensor to the strut. We just don't want to put a bunch of stress on that when we're uh, trying to get the axle out because we are going to be moving this old knuckle assembly uh, towards us and that will put stress on that on those two items so we're just going to take those loose pretty rusty but <laughs> I'll just take that 12 millimeter bolt out that should give you enough room with your uh, hoses to uh, be able to pull this. Now you do have a bracket here, it just kind of snaps on. These are just a plastic little bracket, it kind of snaps on. Go ahead and take that off. So next thing we're going to do is, uh, I guess we'll zip this uh, axle nut off. Since we're here. Now this is a 30 millimeter, it's got the, the multi-points on it. If you don't have one of these sockets, I'm sure the auto parts store will run it to you. It's pretty rusty, so I'm going to, uh, I should have done this before, I'm going to go ahead and soak it down a little bit and work it back and forth. Alright, so I went ahead and got the uh, action nut off. That thing was pretty tight, uh, but we finally got it off the Milwaukee. So anyway, now you're going to have the two uh, knuckle bolts here, uh, 22 mil. Just go ahead and use an open end, hold one end, and hopefully you have an impact or something for the other end, for the nut side, you can get it off. They're pretty tight. <coughs> I already had these two loosened. So uh, just take those out, the bolts are enough. And you'll probably have to lift up on the knuckle a little bit to get it out. It's okay. And then, uh, might be ready to, uh, start getting the axle loose for the transmission. Got to push in on it. There's one of them. Obviously there's two. And we'll just tap this one out a little bit. Now your uh, knuckle should pull out away from the strut. And this should give us enough room here to. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and loosen this bracket here on the speed sensor. It looks like a 10 mil. Still pulling a little bit tighter than I would like on that speed sensor. And I don't want to take the speed sensor off from the knuckle down here. Because this car's got 250,000 miles on it, and I'm worried that uh, 
you know, it's going to be seized in there, rusted in there, and then we're going to have to spend more money. Depending on what we want, or then what he wants. Try to avoid changing any extra parts on it. Um, so it's just 10 millimeter in here in the fender well. And that gives us plenty of room now. Uh, you can see here. Now we got plenty of room for that. We don't have to worry about pulling too tight and damaging it. So uh, now we got the nut off. We should be able to push this axle through and release it from the knuckle here. You see it's released from the knuckle now. So now we gotta get underneath there and what I usually use is a pickle fork and a hammer and we just uh, pry bar whatever you have and we're just gonna release it from the transmission. You're gonna want to put a pan under there. We probably won't lose that much fluid but you probably will lose a little bit of fluid when we uh, take the axle out and uh, you don't want to create a mess. So anyway get yourself a pickle fork and a sledge or some kind of pry bar and I'm pretty sure on these we just go under there Kick them out our way, they should come right out. So let me get you under there and get me set up, and then uh, we'll go back to it. All right, so we're under the car here. You can see I got the drain pan set up right underneath where the axle's at. And all you're going to do is go under here, and we're going to get right there. You can see the axle. Oop, right there, you can see the axle. And all we're going to do is uh, get a pickle fork. And we're going to catch right here on one of these ridges on the axle, and we're just going to tap it out. And actually, yeah, it stops about right there. So I can't hold the camera and do it at the same time, but all you're going to do is put the axle on this high point, or put the pickle fork on this high point of the axle right here, and just tap it away from it, and it should push this axle out. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick off camera, so I can't hold the camera and do it at the same time, but you get the drift on it, or the idea. All right, once you uh, knock your axle out, you're going to have, uh, you know, you're just going to put a uh, pickle fork, whatever you have, right here. You don't want to jam it way in between here and the seal. There's a seal right here on the other end of this, on the transmission side. So on these Toyotas, it's got this little ring around here that protects the seal. You don't want to jam that way in there and screw up the seal. So be careful with that. Or you can hit this little ridge right here. There's these two little, uh, you know, ridges that are up. Uh, elevated from the rest of it. You can get in there and uh, push it out. Whatever you have to do to uh, shock this thing out of there or tap it out of there. You want to have your uh, new axle ready to go. That way when you pull this out uh, you can just slide the new axle in right away which I already did here and that will keep it from uh, leaking too much fluid. And when you put this in you want to put it in with both hands. Guide it in of course, someone's going to call. Guide it in past that seal for it straight. Don't nick that. Don't nick that seal with the uh, axle. Otherwise, you can cause it to leak later on down the road. Kind of push in on this axle. Get rid of all the play in the joints. Tap it in at the end lightly. It should go in. You'll hear it thunk a little bit differently. That means it's seated in there all the way. You can't go any farther, and you're good to go. So once you get all that, we're just going to go ahead and feed this back into the knuckle here, and uh, start putting this thing back together. So once you get it fed into the knuckle, uh, get it back up towards that strut and get at least one of those bolts started on the strut. It'd help if I could see what I'm doing. Should be about right there. Once you get one started, it'll kind of hang everything there for you. And uh, go ahead and get both of them started. And you will want to get your, make sure that your axle is engaged and in there. Otherwise, you won't be able to get those started. And a new, uh, 
The new axle came with a different style nut, so we'll have to get the right socket for that. I don't believe it's the same socket. It might be. No, it's not. So let me get the right socket for the new axle. It's probably going to be a 32. And we'll uh, start putting this back together, like I said. All right, so if you made it this far, you're pretty much home. This is a, the, new, the new nut is 32 millimeter, so we're just going to start it. And then we have uh, the two bolts up here on the knuckle. Those are 22. And I'm going to make sure we get those going. So I can find my good tags. <laughs> Lost my impact here. Though. All right, we're going to put these in factory spec. Which is very tight. Again, uh, you won't be able to get these in without this axle being engaged. So you're going to turn the axle before you put it up there. And get the splines engaged with this knuckle and get your nut started uh, just for good measure. And then we'll go ahead and turn, tighten these down. <laughs> All right, once you got those tightened down, we're going to go ahead and snug. Uh, the axle nut on. Uh, we will torque that one to spec. I'm just going to go ahead and run it down with the impact and kind of snug it at first. It's 32 mil on this new nut. Now yours might be different. It might come with a factory style nut or it might come with uh, the regular nut. This is the factory style nut. And if I could see what I'm doing here. You can see it's got several points. I don't even know what that is. Might be a 12 point. I'm not sure. But uh, anyway. <laughs> So I just got it snug down a little bit, and then uh, we'll we'll, re we'll torque them both at the same time. I'll look up a torque spec on it, and uh, a couple different ways you can do that. You can have someone hold the brake after you put the brake spec together and torque this nut down. You can put the wheel on the ground if you have uh, access to this and torque it, or you can put a pry bar right here in between the lugs and torque it down. Um, and that's how you get to the factory torque. I'll get the spec for you, but I'm not going to do... I'll, I'll let you know here in a second. I'm going to go ahead and put the brakes back on real quick. And uh, I'm just going to torque them down at the same time. So since I'm doing the passenger side, I'm going to leave it like it is now, or it's just torque a little bit. And then I'll go back once I get the uh, passenger side in, and we'll torque both sides down. So now we're just going to pull this hanger off the caliper and rehang the caliper here. Get our 14 millimeter bolts and uh, go from there. All right, so all we really got left on this side, besides uh, uh, torquing that nut down to factory spec, is putting this brake cover back on and the two uh, bolts we took out for the hoses. Go ahead and run those down real quick now. These are kind of a pain because they have that nut on the end, so I'm going to go ahead. It's a very thin nut or bolt that goes, this goes into, so a lot of times your uh, open ends won't fit in there. So I just have a good set of uh, Milwaukee pliers that I use to hold it. That usually holds it, no problem. Kind of annoying at those. You have to hold those. But. Once those are tight, uh, all we have, you know, you're going to reattach this uh, plastic container retainer here. It has little holes on the strut that it lines up with. And then we have a uh, 10 millimeter and a 12 millimeter bolt. We'll do the 12 millimeter first. 
and that is the one that holds the brake hose and the uh, speed sensor together on the strut at the same time, same bolt. So we'll put this one through. Make sure you get both your speed sensor and your brake hose brackets lined back up. Switch out the 12 millimeter. put that back together. We got that 10 millimeter bolt that goes to the uh, fender well, holds the speed sensor in. I went ahead and took that out because we were having a little bit of uh, stress on that, a little bit of stress on that wire, at least more than I like. and. Uh, I did not want to have to change the speed sensor. I'm sure, it's not cheap from Toyota. Now, uh, I will go to one thing real quick. The manual is probably going to tell you you have to take this knuckle off, take your lower ball joint off, your sway link, and all this stuff uh, to get this axle out. I've learned over time you don't have to do that. You can just take this upper knuckle off and loosen up these wires enough to give you enough play to get that axle out. Now you can uh, do that that way. That's fine if you want extra work, uh, but that's how I do it. I've never had a problem with it. The big thing with that, like I said, is just make sure you don't put a lot of stress on your sensor wires and uh, your hoses and stuff. Uh, once you get those out of the way and loosened off, uh, there's plenty of uh, play in these lines for that to come forward enough to get that axle out without taking out uh, the lower ball joint and all that stuff, which is what a lot of places, or I think even the manuals say to do that, and it's not necessary. So that's how we do it here. And anyway, uh, this side's done. All we got left is torque this. I'll get you a torque spec on that real quick before we move on. And then uh, we'll go on to the passenger side. Now, if you only have to do your driver's side, you can switch. The, you can stop the rest of the video. And if you got a passenger side to do, it's a little more involved than this side because it has that intermediate shaft. It's a lot longer and it has an intermediate shaft that goes to it and it has a bracket that bolts to the engine. Uh, we'll get we'll go over that on the passenger side next. So anyway, uh, if you're just here for the driver's side, it's pretty much done. I'll get you torque spec on the next segment and then we'll start on the passenger side. All right, before we move on to the next side, I looked it up. It's 217 foot pounds on that axle nut. So you're going to want to uh, torque it down to 217. And then this axle has a small groove in it right here, and you're going to want to take a anvil or some kind of punch and just punch the lip of this nut uh, onto that uh, axle so that kind of locks it in place. So 217 foot-pounds, and then punch this axle nut, and you're good to go. All right, so we're on the passenger side. I'm going to go ahead and just take these uh, hoses off real quick like we did on the driver's side. Uh, 10 millimeter on the fender well here. You'll see it, uh, just follow your speed sensor line up to the fender well and you'll see a 10 millimeter bolt that's hold on a long bracket that's holding the uh, speed sensor to the firewall, the wire. Just gonna kinda go back in the order that I had it so that uh, tools are already there. And then we'll take this 12 millimeter off here at the strut. This is the bolt that holds the uh, lines to the actual strut. You just kind of pull your hose out of the way, kind of pull your this off. You got this little plastic retainer that just there's two small holes on the strut itself that this kind of snaps into. It's really just take it off by hand. That'll give you all the room in the world that you need now to uh, move that knuckle forward. We're gonna go ahead and take the uh, caliper loose here, hopefully. These are 14 mil, in case you're not watching the driver's side video, which is the same video, but in case you skip forward. But then we're just going to, sometimes we got to hold this stupid nut, which we do on this side, on the bottom one. Doesn't take 
take much to fold those. Now we got that off, we can go ahead and sorry, my head's in the way. Go ahead and swing this caliper out of the way. Go ahead and pull it off. Use a hanger or whatever you have. If you don't have a hanger, you can get bungee cord or whatever. Just hang your caliper off to the side here. Just don't want it uh, pulling on your hoses. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take the axle nut off. The other side was real rusty. So I'm gonna take it off and hopefully this one comes off a little easier. All right, so that came off pretty good. And I'm, I'm just gonna tap on it, make sure that it's uh, not seized in there. It's not moving too well. There it goes. Sometimes these get seized in there, and I have a special puller that takes care of that, but I like to uh, see what I'm dealing with before I get too far with it. So uh, it was moving in. And you can, if you're going to replace the axle anyway, you can go ahead and hit that. It's not going to hurt anything. If it was going to reuse the axle for some reason, then I would put the nut back on it I hit it like that. But uh, taking this axle out. So now we got these two uh, knuckle bolts that we're going to take out and remove. 22 millimeter. <laughs> Car's kind of got mud on or something that's making all the tools fit kind of tight. Ah! All right, so we left off uh, on the last segment where all we had to do was slide this axle out. We already had the suspension apart and took out the uh, outer axle out of the knuckle. And all that was left to do was basically, if this car would have been normal, all that we had left to do would be, you get under there, you see this, it's bolted to the engine like this. This is the bracket, the carrier bearing bracket. And you have this clip right here that goes right there. And it's held in by this, these two little uh, retainers here. And all you do is get a pair of pliers or whatever, compress this. Uh, this should come out. It won't come out all the way because the axle's there, but it'll loosen. And then you should be able to just tap this axle or pry it out and uh, go about your business. You also have to remove this uh, bolt here on the bottom. And uh, anyway, I don't know if it's because... Uh, I mean, I've had this problem a lot with, with in the past with Toyota and... I don't know if it's because I'm in the Midwest, St. Louis here, we get a lot of rust or whatever, but uh, I know that uh, I can't think of any other manufacturer I've had this much trouble with other than Toyota with the, with the same problem. So you have to go to drastic measures, and the reason why is you're trying to get this axle to slide out of this bracket, obviously, and what happens is the rust forms around this uh, carrier bearing here and uh, seizes it on there. And uh, there's really no way to uh, knock it out while you're under the car. I mean, it, you know, uh, I've coupled these. I had to put this in the press after I've cut them out and uh, actually press them out. So the problem with it is this bolt here, there's three bolts to hold this to the engine. You have, uh, you know, three bolts to go to the engine. Well, this bolt right here, you could just unbolt this and pull it all out at once. But the problem is, this bolt right here is covered up like this. So there's no way for you to get that bolt out uh, with this axle in. And there's no way to get the axle out without it coming out of this or getting that bolt out. So you have a problem. Now, uh... Could use a torch, plasma cutter, whatever you have. Now I know we're getting out of the scope of uh, a normal do-it-yourselfer. When you get to, when you get to this point, um, you know if you can't get yours out and you're not uh, a real skilled do-it-yourselfer, you may want to abort the mission at that point, put it back together, and take it somewhere. Uh, 
Most shops charge about six, seven hundred bucks to do this. Just this axle, if this happens. Um, if you're somewhat competent to do it yourself, or and you have a uh, saw, what I use is just a normal, uh, you know, saw. And I use these, uh, you can use Diablo. What I use on this one is the Linux. Uh, thick metal carbide bit pretty expensive They're about 15 probably 10 to 15 bucks a piece And I think the Diablo is the same basic uh, thing and what you do is You basically just cut this off. So this was attached like this and You get in there and you just start hacking it off and it took me about probably 30 minutes to knock this one off once you get this one off, you think, okay, well now I can get to these bolts. You're like, sweet, it's over, 30 minutes. I can get to these bolts now and just slide this out. Well, you can't because in Toyota's infinite wisdom, they put uh, these little pins in the engine block that hook to the front and to the back here. So uh, there's no way to slide this out with these pins in because... Uh, you know, there's no play in the axle. It goes straight into the transmission, and then you're you just you can't move it. So you're still screwed, even if you get those three bolts out and hack this off. So the next step you have to do is basically cut this part of the axle in half. Uh, you can get the the uh, saw up there and get it done. It's not the easiest in the world, but it can be done. Uh, I didn't cut this one all the way through. Once I cut enough of it out, uh, it got enough play in it to where I could uh, wiggle this out. So. Anyway, I would say 30 to 40 minutes for each cut using the saw. Um, if there's someone who knows a better blade than those, let me know. But I use the thick metal. Uh, this is a laser cut thick metal Linux carbide bit. Uh, it takes about 30 minutes to cut them out. And I went through with cutting both out, I went through three blades. Now, uh, in the past... If it's not super bad, it just depends. Like I said, we're in the Midwest here with the, with the, with the uh, rust and stuff. When you take this bolt out, you get a longer bolt, a longer, stronger bolt, and you run it through there. And what that does is break this bearing like this. I, I tried that first. And I ran, sometimes you can run a longer bolt through here, break this bearing like this is broke, and then uh, it'll beat its way out. But uh, this one, there was no way it was happening. I was taking swinging as hard as I could with a pretty heavy swedge and it was not budging at all so at that point I knew I had to cut this out and uh, go from there so once you get it all done um, you want to want to clean up the inside of this the best you can and uh, maybe lube it up it's probably going to happen again but this car has got 250,000 miles on it and uh, this will probably, probably be the last axle that's ever put into it so uh, that's the gist of it with these axles. Now if yours doesn't seize up, all you're going to have to do is remove this bottom bolt, uh, loosen your little clip here, and then beat it out, and then slide your new one in, you're good to go. Now if you're, like I said, uh, I, in my experience this happens more often than not with these Toyotas on the passenger side, where they just seize in here, and the last one I did, I actually had to put this in a press and beat it out, or uh, press it out. This one I was able to put in a vise, I actually was able to beat it out with a sledge, but I, we're talking full swings, both hands, you know, uh, hitting it pretty hard until it finally came out. So, anyway, I'm going to clean this up and lube it. I'm going to put this back on the car. There's, like I said before, there's three bolts to it. And then we'll be able to slide that new axle in and uh, get this thing out of here. So, uh, if yours is seized up... And you do plan on doing it yourself, just uh, know it's going to take you a couple hours probably to cut these out. And uh, after you get them cut out, you're still going to have to uh, somehow get this piece out of this. It's easier to work with uh, once it's out of the car, obviously. Like I said, I put this one in a vise and kind of held it and just beat on it as hard as I could about, I don't know, 10 times. And it finally started to give way. Uh, I was getting ready to put in the press, actually. And then it started to move, so uh, I was able to avoid the press this time. But uh, 
And if you live in an area, if you, if you can't get it out, you could uh, you could take the machine shop and have them press it out. The worst case scenario, if you decide to keep doing the job, if you have this problem, and depend, I guess depending on where you live, if you get lucky, you may or may not have the problem. But like I said, I've ran into this uh, way more than once on Toyotas, and uh, actually, I think the older Camrys and stuff, uh, Corollas, you can get this bracket off without uh cutting it i think the access for the bolts are easier for whatever reason this is solera and i think the camry uh they put the bolt right behind here right behind this and there's just no way to get it out without cutting the axle out so and like i said there's other methods you could maybe use a plasma cutter or, or a torch or something uh, i just didn't feel comfortable doing it. i have a torch but i didn't feel comfortable doing that this car has got a lot of oil leaks and stuff and i just would rather cut it out and avoid a fire if i could so uh, that's where I'm at. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back together. And uh, if you're running into a bind with your Toyota passenger side axle, this is an option. Like I said, it's a little bit time consuming cutting it, but uh, it will work. And it will allow you to uh, get it out and get back on the road. So that's where we're at now. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, like I said, clean this up, put this back on, and we'll slide this new axle in. I'm going to grease this up a little bit. Slide the new axle in it, and we'll uh, finish this video out on the reassembly. All right, I went ahead and cleaned up that uh, bracket. Usually on stuff like that, I'll use a uh, wire brush inside a drill. It's usually one of the easiest ways to do that. And then I put some uh, extra grease in there just to lube it up a little bit. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put this new one in. Don't forget to put your snap ring uh, right in between your axle and the bearing here. Um, I mean, you can do it after you install it, but either way, it's just don't forget you're going to need that in there. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and go over back over to the car and slide this back in, hopefully, and uh, we'll put the snap ring in and then start putting the suspension back together. All right, so we're on the vehicle here. You can see there's that bolt that I was talking about, and the axle's right in the way of it. Um, this is the bracket that bolts to the engine block, and then here you have that clip and sorry it's kind of fuzzy i'm so close to it but uh here's that clip that you have to release just take a pair of pliers or a long needle nose and release it sometimes it's rusted in there like what mine was on the old one and you take a screwdriver and kind of get underneath it and pry around it but uh now that it's slid back in you put that ring back in and then you're done underneath here and if you did take out uh the 14 millimeter bolt here you would have to reinstall that. There's a little rubber piece at the end of it. Don't forget that. And then put this back in and tighten it up. That's a 14 mil. Okay, one thing I will point out on the passenger side, uh, if you watch the driver's side, you know we didn't take the ball joint out on the bottom because this comes out far enough uh, to release it. But the passenger side actually is a little bit longer than the driver's side. And even the CV part of it. And... Uh, it almost comes out even with all, everything loose but not quite so what I do on the passenger side on Toyota is I take the uh, I take two bolts out of the lower ball joint there's 17 mil there's three of them all together I take two out and I loosen one pretty loose and that gives you enough room to pull this forward enough to get the axle out without taking the ball joint or tie rod or anything else completely out so that's just a little little trick or tip there uh, just leave one nut in about halfway and you should have plenty of room to manipulate this out to get the axle out. So I went ahead and uh, tightened the ball joint. I put this back in the spindle here or the knuckle. Tighten the ball joint back up. Like I said, it's 17 millimeter. And now I'm just going to uh, get a bolt up on this knuckle here and get this thing going back together. Make sure you don't pinch your lines or get lines on the wrong side of this. And we're just going to put this up, and of course the light's going to fall. Uh, being in my existence are these lights, well, any light, can't stand any of them. So, uh, try to make this where we can still see. throw this one in the trash can. I use the magnetic lights, the cordless ones, but they're all, I have problems. I got four of them right now 
all four of them have issues. Kind of frustrating. Well, I'm going to get a different light so I can at least film this. I'll be right back. All right, so we're just going after these top uh, strut bolts here. Kind of get everything in place. Put the bottom one in already. And I'm just going to hopefully slide the top one in. So that has to be persuaded a little bit. Torque those down. Those were, I believe, 22 millimeter. Yeah, they're 22. So basically, once you get to this point, you're just doing, you're just going back racking and doing uh, what you took off. Basically. Back together, of course. All right, we'll just snug the axle nut. We're not going to uh, do the final torque on it right now, but I do want to snug it up. Make sure that it's locked in and engaged, which it should be if it's sticking out this far. And we're just going to run it down a little bit. back on it's two 14 millimeter bolts the air compressor is running and I figured you guys didn't want to hear that so uh, we're gonna go ahead and put this brake line back on and this uh, line back up this uh, speed sensor line and that's that uh, 12 millimeter bolt that you took out. Give yourself some slack. Being a little ignorant on me today. So, just run this one in. Get you got your little plastic uh, retainer here for your speed sensor. It just goes in the holes on the strut on each side. You can just put it in by hand. And then all you should have left after that, besides your wheel, will be uh, 10 millimeter on the fender well for your speed sensor that we took off. And uh, that should line back up, no problem. That one's 10 millimeter. Alright, so all we got left now is a wheel. Um, just closing thoughts, you want to check, depending on how much transmission fluid uh, you lost, you're going to want to check your transmission fluid. It's a good time to check it anyway, even if you didn't lose that much. And uh, other than that, that's pretty much it. Uh, this is a pretty common thing on these uh, Toyotas with the axle being seized in there. So if yours looks real rusty and you're beating on it, it won't come off. Uh, unfortunately, you may have to take uh, extreme measures to get it out of there. Uh, you know, it's, I wouldn't say it's out of the scope of a do-it-yourselfer, but uh, it definitely complicates things. You don't forget to tighten your uh, axle nut too, 217 foot-pounds. Um, it will complicate things, but if you're good with the sawzall, you can get it out, or if you have a torch or something, I just, I don't know, I don't like uh, 
usually the torch is that tight in the engine there. Um, but uh, maybe a plasma cutter or something, I don't know. But I use a sawzall on it. It takes a little longer. The blades are expensive, but then I don't blow myself up or have any issues. So I feel uh, I use torch on a lot of things, but when you get back in there where the edge is at and there's oil and, you know, a car 250,000 miles, hopefully it doesn't have a gas leak or whatever, but you never know. So uh, I just take the safe route and use a sawzall on it. Um, other than that, uh, if you get lucky, maybe if you live like in the west or somewhere in the south where it doesn't get as much snow and rain, yours might come out. But this is a very common problem on the Toyota's on the passenger side. And uh, that's just the method I use to get it out. It adds, like I said, it's going to add an hour or two to the job. But uh, it is what it is when you live in, I guess, the salt belt or the rust belt or whatever they want to call it. So anyway, uh, i got to get out of here and go to the junkyard and get a shifter for a Honda that's got a seized up shifter. So I guess we'll see you on the next one hopefully. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them below or send me a message on YouTube or Facebook. Thanks for watching. As always, God bless.